covariance and correlation. Let's first dig into what covariance is. Now here's your standard definition for covariance. It's a measure of how returns on two assets move or do not move in the same direction. Um, it's similar to variance in terms of how it's calculated, but instead of calculating variability of, of data points from an, a variable's mean, we're comparing two variables to their means and get an understanding of how these variations differ or are similar. Now, how do we interpret a covariance statistic? Well, if, uh, if, if it's greater than zero, it means it's a positive relationship. Obviously, that would mean that assets, two stocks, two investments tend to move together. If it's less than zero or negative, it's a negative relationship. They tend to move in opposite directions. The downside of covariance is that units make it very difficult to interpret further than that. Um, the strength of the relationship and be able to compare uh, covariances across assets is uh, a bit difficult. Hence, the correlation statistic, also known as the correlation coefficient. And it's very similar to covariance in a sense that it allows us to, to get a sense of a positive or negative relationship between the two assets. But unlike covariance, it's a lot easier to interpret. And we're, we're, we're able to, to get a, a better understanding of how strong the positive or negative relationship really is. And it's easier to, to interpret because it standardizes the values and places bounds of negative one and one um, on its possible values. So in addition to the degree or the strength of uh, the relationship that we can measure, correlations also allow us uh, easier comparisons between different pair of assets, which again, co covariance does not allow us to do. And that's why you're more likely to see correlation data because it's a lot more useful to us in finance and investments when we're comparing two assets. Now here's your typical correlation formula. As you can see, it's derived from uh, the covariance of two assets, but then divided by each security that, or each asset's standard deviation of returns. Luckily, uh, Excel also has a formula to easily calculate correlation. Um, and here, uh, we're using the array functionality within Excel, um, where the first array would be uh, the returns of, uh, of asset one, and the second ar array would be the returns of asset two uh, for a quick and easy calculation in Excel. Now, scatter plots. Scatter plots are formed by using data of two securities to plot along an X and Y axis. And here are a couple of examples. First, here's a scatter plot of uh, the data uh, being plotted from the, the lower left to the upper right. This graph shows a perfect correlation or correlation of positive one. So as one asset moves, the other asset moves in the same direction in the same proportion. Here's an example of just a, the mirror image. It goes from the top left to the bottom right. This is a correlation of minus one, perfectly negative. So the two assets move in opposite directions by the same proportion. And this third scatter plot is a little bit more all over the place. And uh, here is a correlation of zero. There's no relationship that's apparent. If one asset moves, it doesn't give us any information on how the other assets, other asset will potentially move. Now, visually inspecting a scatter plot like this um, is not typically sufficient to, to demonstrate a statistical relationship. It's just a, a starting point. So for examining data, in order to assess whether there appears to be uh, an underlying relationship. Now you'll rarely see measures in the perfect outer bounds as we see here. Rather, you'll typically see them between the negative one value and the positive one value. And, uh, and then the strength of the relationship increases as the value approaches either of those outer bounds. Some other key points around correlation. And probably the most important use of the correlation statistic in finance is that it helps us determine what asset to add to a portfolio to increase diversification. A couple of examples. The lower the correlation, the more diversification benefits. That makes sense, right? Because the lower the correlation, uh, the higher likelihood that, that assets move in different directions, increasing diversification. Of course, the complete opposite is true also. If we have two assets with a perfect correlation of positive one, there are no diversification benefits. 
by adding them together to a portfolio. They will move together in the same direction by the same proportion and therefore do not change the variability of returns in a portfolio. Another key point is that correlation does not equal causation. You may have heard that phrase before, correlation does not equal causation, but let's go through a quick example. Snow boots and car accidents have a correlation, but snow boots do not cause car accidents. You know, here the relationship is pretty obvious, right? Uh, you tend to wear boots when it snows outside, and the number of car accidents also increases when it snows outside. So it's obvious in this instance that the correlation between snow boots and car accidents is not from the relationship with themselves, but instead with a third variable, and in this case, it being in the snow. Let's take a quick look at a correlation matrix. It's a widely used tool to get a sense of how assets or asset classes move together in their potential diversification benefits. Here we have a table showing correlation coefficients of asset classes, both on the x-axis and on the y-axis, over the long term. And in this case, it's 1926 to 2015. Now you can see that the diagonal on the table is always set to 1, because the correlation between one asset class to itself is always going to be 1, obviously. As an example, let's take a look at the two data points highlighted in red for intermediate government bonds. Historically, intermediate government bonds have had the most negative correlation to equities, both small cap stocks and large cap stocks. This would show us that over the long term, intermediate government bonds have been the best diversifier to include in an equity portfolio over the long term.